Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, we are going over what I consider to be uncomfortable truths about this game. Statements or takes that, while they're probably unpopular, are true. Now, to be clear, this is primarily for entertainment and fun, a concept that is foreign to a very large portion of the player base. Before we get going, I invite you all to come out and see me at the USS Hornet out in the Bay Area for their Carrier Con event. It is their pop culture convention they hold aboard the Hornet, and they invited me to come out and be on one of their panels. So if you guys can make it on the dates that should be showing up on screen right now, I encourage you guys to attend. Alright, let's go ahead and get going with our first one. And that is, Soviet bias doesn't exist. Shoot him! Cut out his tongue! Shoot him and cut out his tongue, then shoot his tongue. It's a meme. Sure, we've had a few Soviet ships get released in an overpowered state, like the Kremlin and Petro being two of the most prolific ones. They had their reign of terror for some time, but look at them today. Petro is no longer the super tanky cruiser that can out-tank a battleship, plus her guns have been nerfed to the point where they struggled to hit anything past 14 kilometers. Kremlin got nerfed into the dirt so hard that she barely shows up in competitive anymore, let alone random battles. What's that I hear you type in the comments? Oh yes, the Nakamov. Good point, that ship is busted as hell. No argument here. So very nice, there's one super overpowered Soviet ship. Now let's take a look at the Americans. There's what, three American premiums that have been removed for being too popular? The wargaming code word for broken? First off, you've got the Georgia, the pixel ship incarnation of why are you running, you're just gonna die tired. The 18 inch armed battleship that can go well above 40 knots with her speed boost, run down DDs and melt them with her accurate American secondaries, can outflank most flanks and then shove her six 18 inch shells into the broadsides of the ships that simply can't keep up with her. Not to mention too, she has the super heavy American AP that makes these 16 inch guns of the main line feel like 17 or 18 inch guns and you can imagine what that super heavy AP shell does for those 18 inch guns. Then you have the Massachusetts, the tier 8 American premium ship that simply doesn't care what tier it's in, it's going to do well, be it in a tier 8 game, a tier 9 game, or a tier 10 game, or if you're unfortunate enough to be in a tier 6 ship and run to the Massachusetts, you're just dead. And then we have the Alaska. You think the Petra Pavlovsk is busted? You've never eaten a salvo of Alaska AP to your armor belt, and it shows. Not to mention, unlike the Petro, the Alaska can, one, hit crap at range, and two, has good HE. If it doesn't get Citadel to death, it'll burn it down. Not to mention, the Alaska has radar and hydro, and is one of the tankier of the large cruisers in the game. And those are just the removed ships, too. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the Ohio. A competitive season doesn't go by where that ship isn't everywhere. For good reason, with its 18 inch super heavy AP shells just like the Georgia, but she has 8 instead of 6. Then we have the new American hybrid BBs which are absolutely cracked at the moment. Midway is still everywhere and considered to be one of the best CVs for competitive whenever CVs are allowed back into competitive. And this is just the Americans. Shall we look at the French? The Jean Bar? The Alsace? Or the British? I've done a whole series on why Thunderer is busted as hell. The point being is that every nation has their busted ships. It's a nice joke to say, Soviet bias when a broken Russian ship comes out, but some take it way too far and seem to be absolutely rabid about it. So guys, it's a game. Things happen. All games have balancing issues. With that being said, let's go ahead and move on to our next point. Which is, you should play submarines. Yes, you should. You really should. Why? To understand them, and because they're not going anywhere. We have two lines out right now, the Americans and the Germans, with a third line in early access, the British, and another two lines in development, the Soviets and the Japanese. Now, to be clear, I could care less if submarines were just dropped from the game tomorrow. I'd be fine with that. But they're not going anywhere, guys. They're out. More are coming out. They've been in the game essentially for two years. They're not going to just remove them. I see so many comments complaining about sub mechanics that haven't been in, in the game since testing started two years ago, still today. Now, 
Why is it important that you play submarines? Well, the best way to understand the class that gives you the biggest headache is to play it. And submarines are causing a lot of migraines right now according to my comment section. For example, back in the day when I first started playing this game, I had a problem with a wall of torpedoes appearing out of nowhere and sinking me when I was going up the American battleship line. I was so confused. I'm not I'm not seeing the ship that's that's torpedoing me. I don't know where they're at, how they're getting there. I thought destroyers were just busted. And instead of playing them, I just shoved my head in the dirt. I just kept grinding my happy little self up to the Montana and it wasn't until I got to the German battleships when I was grinding my way through that line that I finally decided, hey, let me pick up a DD and see what's going on. Because if they're so busted, why am I playing battleships and why am I not just playing DDs all the time? Once I started to play DDs, I finally understood, oh, it's very rare for you to actually get a lot of torpedo hits in a game. Oh, I don't have any armor. If I get shoot just slapped mildly by some battleship he half my health is gone and in most cases i don't have a heal to regen that back oh my engine gets knocked out and unlike in a battleship where it's a slight inconvenience for a minute or two depending upon the situation it's a big deal in a destroy when your maneuver when your maneuverability gets knocked out because that is what keeps you alive Oh, I gotta be super careful about my positioning. And oh, I see, you go after the guy that's not paying attention, and yeah, that's how you get those easy kills. It clicked with me after that, and now I'm much better at dealing with destroyers and battleships than I were beforehand. Because I just shoved my head in the dirt, ignored the mechanics, ignored that, hey, you're being spotted, dum-dum, and if you can't see what's spotting you, that's probably a DD. And you know what you should do? probably move your rudder a little bit to throw off their torpedoes. Same thing applies to submarines. If you do not understand how the class works, how can you counter it? And you have to have the most up-to-date information. You can't be going off what you saw two years ago when submarines were in testing. You have to play them in today's World of Warships to understand the mechanics and understand how to deal with them. Myself, several other YouTubers, and even Wargaming themselves have put out videos on how submarines work now. I encourage you guys to check out one of those videos. It doesn't have to be mine. Just find one, at least watch the video, play a couple rounds of subs in the game so you understand how the things work. You will be a better player for it. And that doesn't just apply to submarines. That applies to DDs, cruisers, battleships, aircraft carriers. You should be playing all these classes and understand how it works if you want to be able to counter them as best you can in game and yes there are some mechanics that even I agree are a little stupid like how they can still rock and roll at pretty much top speed at periscope death I still think that's pretty dumb but guys you gotta play them to understand them thirdly you don't want skill based matchmaking at least not in random battles so a common complaint is that matchmaking is stacking one side or the other so grossly inadequately that we are getting these blowout matches at higher tier. Well, a common solution given for this problem is we need to implement skill-based matchmaking in this game. What is skill-based matchmaking? Well, skill-based matchmaking is something similar to ranked, where be it your win rate, your PR, or whatever, some type of measurement is made of your skills and you are matched against equally competent players in matchmaking and therefore ideally the matches should be nice and balanced and fair how does matchmaking work right now well the way it works and again the only ones that you know 100 percent for sure how it works is wargaming i'm going off of what we've been told in the past is that it's truly random as far as who gets put on what side but the matchmaker does do a couple of things when it comes to the ships being selected and it's supposed to mirror the sides as close as possible for things like ship types now i don't mean ship classes obviously you know if there's five battleships on one side the other side should have five battleships as well but i mean the types of ships like radar cruisers if there's 10 radar cruisers in queue ideally five should be on one side five should be on the other side if there's two yammies in queue 
a Yami should be on one side, a Yami should be on the other side, or another sniping or large caliber battleship should be on the other side. It's supposed to get as close as possible in ship, ship composition in Q. Other than that, it doesn't really do much in terms of, well, it doesn't do anything at all in terms of the player's win rate or anything like that. So sometimes, just because it is random battles, we do get teams that are absolutely stacked with Unicums. You can see that they, they got the purple clan tags, and you look at the other side, and it's just not that. If you have a matchmaking monitor, you will see this happen quite a bit. Now, skill-based matchmaking. Why is this given as a solution? Skill-based matchmaking takes the skills of the players into account through some type of measurement and makes matches where we have equally skilled players going up against one another. Well, it sounds good and all in practice, but if you ever look at games that do have actual skill-based matchmaking, you'll see that they're complaining just about uh, their matchmaking as much as we're complaining about our matchmaking. Why? Because, well, they're still getting matches that one side seems to absolutely roll over the other side, and it's also a system that you can abuse. You can tank your stats to be matched with lower skilled players, and then, well, you might be a super unicum. Now you're down with a bunch of players that are far below average and now it's just still clubbing for you that happens in games with skill based matchmaking and also too you could maybe have one or two really good matches and now you're getting matched up against some super unicums or whatever and the thing is too the more you play this game the more difficult it is to change your stats because the more battles you get under your belt obviously the number of battles goes up and it gets harder to increase things like average damage win rate that's why people re-roll their accounts. They, they make new accounts and they start over again. That way they can have better stats. My stats would probably go up for sure because, sh shoot, I was terrible at this game for the first year or so that I was playing. I'm still not, like, amazing or anything. I'm average, uh, above average in battleships, but I'm not, you know, super amazing or anything uh, by any stretch of the imagination. So, yeah, as much as people tr try to just champion this cause of skill-based matchmaking from what I've seen from other games that have skill-based matchmaking it's just as bad if not worse than what we have right now is what we have right now a perfect system no there's still a lot of weird cases of for some reason uh, this side got you know four radar cruisers and we got one when you you know you really could have just spread it out a lot more evenly or this side got you know um, two super ships and we have none for some reason there's still some weird things like that that happens that I do think the devs need to take a closer look at, but just slotting in skill-based matchmaking isn't an answer that you guys want to go with, from what I've seen at least. Alright guys, so that's all for this video. This is just, you know, a video for fun. It's, again, take it with a grain of salt. It's lighthearted fun, entertainment. It's just something I wanted to try out, a new kind of style of video. Let me know if you guys would like more in the comments down below below. If you did enjoy, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 50,000 subscribers, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you're all having a wonderful Thursday. Have a wonderful rest of your week. I hope to catch you guys in the next one.